If you've been on this channel for a while with me, you know that I am a firm believer in the power of food. The power of food being your medicine and being your spiritual source of an energy supply. After all, matter or nature is the Shakti of consciousness. It is the Shakti and the expression of the soul. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know that I very much promote a plant-based diet along with the Ayurvedic system of knowing what your actual dosha is. With that being said, in my life, in my adult life, I have tried many many supplements before and you guys know that I am a huge fan of the ASEA redox supplement the liquid as well as the gel but did you also know that ASEA has a vitamin line that's right it's called the ASEA via there are four different types of supplements that ASEA is offering this one is the source which is whole food and micronutrients complex they also have life max which supports a healthy lifestyle they also have an omega and they have a probiotic now again with this being said I am very much a snob when it comes to supplements again I've, I've been using supplements for a very very long time because early on in my adult life especially with my yoga career with Ashtanga yoga I realized again how important the value of nutrients were to your overall spiritual health. The body is energy and food is energy. And if we're giving our body the correct energy, just like you give your car the correct energy, the correct gas, then your body, your mind, your well-being will work better for you. Now again, yes, there are lots of supplements out there that are frankly crap. And I was not going to actually try the ASEA supplements when I first started using ASEA because I was health happy with the supplements I had been taking. But one day I was on their website and I I was like, you know what? I'm actually just gonna try it. I'm gonna order these vitamins and I'm just gonna see how I like them. My boyfriend also is the same of me. He himself is very skeptical of supplements. He's been doing supplemental work for literally 30 years now. And so for him, he too was skeptical. Well, the first supplement we got was the source. In this supplement, it has spirulina, alfalfa leaf juice, wheat grass juice, barley grass juice, oat grass juice, pomegranate juice, ossi berry juice, raspberry juice, blueberry juice, cranberry juice, grape juice, goji berry juice, sea kelp, broccoli, cabbage, parsley, kale, dandelion, and broccoli sprouts. It says on the box, a food-based micronutrient complex with a unique blend of superfoods, which a lot of what I just read to you is considered a superfood, as well as plant extracts and trace minerals. Now again, once I got the bottle, I was still a little skeptical. I again am a creature of habit and I liked the supplement I was on. But right when I opened this, I could smell the potency of the capsules inside. I knew the minute I opened this, this was going to be good. The same thing with the Life Max. Now for me, I do struggle with inflammation because I do have a propensity to have some arthritic flare-ups. This has a lot of turmeric in it and turmeric is nature's anti-inflammatory. Basically, it's like nature's ibuprofen. And as it says on the back that this is designed to counter the negative effects of aging. This supplement contains natural herb extracts, which increase energy levels, support the immune system, and promote healthy inflammatory responses, support joint health, and promote a healthy, more youthful appearance. Now again, these two, in my opinion, are the Mac Daddies. And I will say, two days after my boyfriend being on these supplements, he came home from work saying that he could not believe the amount of energy he had that day. He was so impressed by the quality of, especially this one, of these vitamins that there was no way he would ever go back to the vitamins that we were originally taking. Now, if you go to the ASEA website, which will be linked down in the description box below, you will see this little category of cell nutrition. Just click on that below and you will see all the different 
vitamins here. Once again, if you click on the individual vitam vitamins, you can see more details about each vitamin. Now, as you guys know, or if you've been on this channel for a while, you know I am a vegetarian. The omega does have extracts from the fish, um, which obviously a lot of omega uh, products do have fish in them but from what i have heard so i don't take the omega but from what i have heard from people who do take the omega their biggest biggest takeaway from a sia's omega is that they're not left with a fishy taste in their mouth for the rest of the day now i personally am hoping that one day a sia will make an omega supplement that is good for us vegetarians just like they have done with their collagen radiance they've made the collagen radiance vegetarian friendly so anyway guys just another wonderful thing that is brought to you by ASEA if you are interested or want more information on the vitamin line or any of ASEA's products please text Bryce info to 321-216-8047 again that's Bryce info to 321-216-8047 if you are contacting Jay from a country outside of the United States, make sure you let him know that and make sure you add a plus one to his phone number. That is our country code. And make sure you double check that the vitamin line is available in your country. That will have to do with whatever red tape ASEA has to go through with your health and, and administration with your government. So just double check on that. It is available in the United States. I think it's available in most countries at this point. But again, for more information, text J, text Bryce info to 321-216. 8047. If you're already sold on these vitamins and you want to try them, I will put a link down in the description box that takes you directly to the vitamin so it makes it easier for you just to quickly purchase. If 30 days goes by and you're not happy with the product, ASEA will offer you a full refund, no questions asked. All right, you guys, with that being said, back to our show. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta for our weekly chit chat, venting, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> with my friend Catherine Edwards, who's my co host as well. How are you today, Catherine? I'm good. I feel very good after our little um, off screen chat because. <laughs> I think sometimes it's really important for people to have things where they can really just get things off their chest without everything being put, to, you know, picked apart. And one thing I did want to say is the reason we call these coffee chats is because they're coffee chats. Mm -hmm. Not trying to teach you something. We're not trying to. We're just sharing our thoughts out loud as they come in. And if they resonate with you, great. And if they don't, equally great. So long as they provoke some sort of thought process some sort of curiosity some sort of oh i wonder then we've um served our aim really yeah and it's and i feel like everybody who's watching they're sitting at the coffee table with us and so i want to okay. reiterate that we're not like bitching to you guys we are we're trying to talk to you and have you respond back in the comment sections like we are literally trying to figure out what what the solution is to some of these problems that we're facing in our world and especially in the community that we find ourselves in um the quote unquote truther i freaking hate that i hate that word truther because that implies that we know the truth and nobody knows the truth we're just seekers we're trying to figure out what's going on and so we appreciate all you guys that tune in and give your thoughts and your opinions in the comment section because we value what you have to say because we are all just human beings um you know i know people like to create conspiracies about those of us on youtube but in reality anybody can open up a youtube channel guys and i am filming in my bedroom there's nothing that's any different about me than anybody else watching right now we're all just human beings we're all just walking each other home and speaking of that 
we were going to kind of talk about today this term called cognitive dissonance. And so I am going to share screen quickly in case you guys don't know what that means. This is a term used in psychotherapy. Cognitive dissonance is a mental discomfort that results from holding two conflicting beliefs, values, or attitudes. And so let's talk about because we see a lot of that in the quote unquote truth or community as well as from the other side of this. Um, so basically, you know, a lot of psychiatrists or especially cult experts will kind of use this example. So let's say that you've been taught something. Let's use Scientology, for example, because I've heard people in Scientology speak of this before. So if somebody in Scientology is labeled a suppressive person, a suppressive person in Scientology is like the Mac Daddy. That's like the Hitlers, the Lenins, the, you know, the Ted Bundys of the world. These are suppressive people. But it just so happens that anybody that speaks out against Scientology is labeled or declared a suppressive person, an SP, right? And so a lot of these people who have come out of Scientology and have been whistleblowers are now labeled SPs. And they've said, said many times before that when they were in Scientology, there was a there was kind of a cognitive dissonance, right? Because if their brother or sister or friend spoke out and was labeled an SP and they had to disconnect from that person, there's a cognitive dissonance because they've been taught that if someone's labeled an SP, that they must be like a serial killer Hitler type. But the reality is they know that person. They know that's not true. So there's conflicting internal conflict between what you've been told is the truth and what you see in the in the world around you, if that makes sense. Perfect sense. Absolutely perfect. And one of the ones I see, you know, that is really obvious to, to sort of almost everyone, because regardless of what your beliefs are and what you eat, it's like when you have the conversation with someone and they sort of say, yeah, I eat meat and humans are carnivores, so we're meant to eat meat, so I'm going to eat them. And then the next minute, they'll be saying something against animal cruelty. But they don't want to hear, and you're awful if you actually show what goes on in a, in a slaughterhouse. Now, the reason this is so important to understand cognitive difference, in my um, opinion, and by the way, every single one of us has it, yeah. every single person. I don't think there's a single person on the planet that hasn't. And sometimes you need other people to point it out to you. But if you're aware of what it is, you can say, oh, I can see what's going on there. We were just having a discussion off camera where I could see where I had cognitive dissonance about a certain situation. But what happens is because it does cause this internal conflict, so you're trying to sort of almost fight for your limitations so you're trying to fight for something that really deep down at a conscious or subconscious level you know you don't really believe or you don't really agree with that leaves a pattern of stress in your body that will come out in some ways and it might come out in behavior and aggression or judgment or some of those low vibration behaviors that we all have from time to time or it might come out as a physical problem if you really do suppress it, because there's so much research now to show how much suppressing your emotions and, and attract emotions come out as physical ailments. So recognizing it is so, so important, because if you don't recognize it, you can't do anything about it. Absolutely. And that's the basis of what we say, critical thinking skills, critical thinking skills. I think sometimes people don't take the time to break down what that means critical thinking skills is being able to critically analyze do an analysis of your own belief system right so and that's in my opinion that's the basis of science anyway i mean Catherine, you're a scientist isn't the basis of science is you have a theory and then you spend your whole career trying to disprove your own theory right Absolutely. Like, that's, that's what it should be mm -hmm. unfortunately it's gone very awry over the last sort of 50 to 100 years and we all know why i think and we don't know i think everyone watching this knows why but this is the problem and when you get so many areas of our life i mean that's a brilliant point you've just made because like most people think they understand what science is but because what they're seeing science play out on the global scale is not behaving like that then you really confusing your mind and you're like wow this is giving such missed messages and particularly we all know as children we're so programmable up to you know the year about seven i mean obviously it varies slightly for individuals but generally speaking up until the year seven we're so influenced by all these programs that are being fed into us so you know if, if you've got young children 
that have got a man with a beard but dressed as a woman with great big boobs they're going to grow up with this level of cognitive difference where they've literally been made to believe that they can't believe their own senses their own eyes uh, that mm. you can't trust yourself yeah that's that's the mm. well and that's the thing too it's it's like my favorite aristotle quote it's a sign of an intelligent mind when you can entertain an idea without accepting it if we were able to even do what aristotle is suggesting we wouldn't have as much cognitive dissonance because we're mm -hmm. able to sit and actually contemplate the other side of whatever belief system we have you know whatever that is and again i just want to make that very clear every single one of us experiences this in the in minor aspects of our life to major acts aspects of our life like we all go through this this is not something i know we're, we're using big examples but this is something every single human being is going to experience i've had cognitive dissonance many times in my life many and then once you realize what it is, is knowledge is power knowledge protects you can go back and start to understand why you're feeling a sense of confusion or anxiety is mm -hmm. what you're being told matching your intuition matching what you're seeing um and and if so why are you trusting what you're being told over what you're actually seeing one of the prime example of this in my opinion in my opinion is the whole the white hats are in charge to me that's massive cognitive dissonance because what we're seeing in the world would tell you otherwise yeah but you're being told not to question to trust the plan right to not to question it and so you're saying oh all these horrific things happening in our world that are literally happening to people are the white hats even though intu intuition might tell you that's not true right I, I don't mean to like offend people by saying that but if it is if that is triggering you then maybe that's a, a sign that there's some cognitive dissonance there and so um yeah so it's 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 literally you you what you said it beautifully Catherine. it's fighting for the limitations that you've been fed to believe Right. And it, it's so important because when I mean, I don't think anyone watching this will not realize how much cognitive difference there's been over the last few years, particularly when it comes to being used as a pincushion. And that doesn't mean so if you want to be used as a pincushion and you genuinely, genuinely believe that that's the right thing to do, then that's not cognitive dissonance. But if you genuinely believe that and it's generally good for you and it generally protects you, then you wouldn't care if someone else has had that or not because you've been protected. Right. So a great example of cognitive dissonance is to have this because you're saying you really believe it, but also to insist that everyone else has this so that they don't infect you when actually that's an oxymoron because yeah. if you really believe this works, you wouldn't worry whether wouldn't anyone else live and let live. And all these signs are in there all the time for all of us. But what I think is really, really important is for people to sort of ask the question, why? What? Who? Whose interest would it be to believe that to spread a rumor or even if it's your truth that the white hats are in control? So let's say, let's just play devil's advocate here, Bryce, and say, the white hats are completely in control. Well, I'm going to say my intuition is saying, well, my God, this is really worrying them because my expectations of what the world would be like if the white hats were in control are not what I'm seeing play out in reality, in every area of reality, from our food, from our water, from our air, from the wars, from the horrendous things that are going on everywhere. So for me, I wouldn't have that cognitive difference. But if someone's really arguing for that, then how, okay, that's fine. How do you explain some of these atrocities that are going on? Is this the type of leader that you want to be following that's lying to you and behaving like the dark side? Yeah. And and can you, you know, a healthy, any type of healthy relationship within, whether it's within your family, whether it's within your work whether it's within politics and dr yanya speaks speaks about this who's worked with our friend kelly teal is transparency yeah so if you're not allowed to question then you're in a situation that's going to foster things like cognitive dissonance right so so if, if for, for my thing with people okay so if the white hats are in control then why can't you question their motives why can't you question people who say that they're in control that's another clue that maybe there's some and actually as speaking of this i just pulled up psychology today and i'm going to share this guys because what 
what cognitive dissonance really is and why this is why this is so broad across the board is it's an inter like as Catherine was saying it's an internal conflict it's an internal feeling so what are the signs that you might be experiencing cognitive dissonance um, general discomfort that has no obvious or clear source. So somebody's telling you something. So a lot of times it is subconscious where you're being told something, but you get uncomfortable because maybe subconsciously your soul, your mind, whatever you believe in is trying to say, Hey, maybe this isn't, I don't know if I believe this confused it, confusion, feeling conflicted over a disputed subject matter. People saying you're being a hypocrite, being aware of conflicting views or desires, but not knowing what to do with them. And they say developing a sense of inner conflict. And I love this, that Dr. Uh, Brenner here says, says experiencing or developing a sense of inner conflict is a good thing to notice because it can lead to rigid beliefs and sudden changes in beliefs and behaviors. If competing values, beliefs, attitudes are not resolved or integrated, it greatly in inhabit and in in inhibits the ability of groups to have constructive dialogue, making it difficult, if not impossible, to arrive at a satisfactory compromise. So Can I just add to that, if you go back up and show people the that list there, now, when you look at that list, is it any surprise that so many young people are suffering from anxiety-related disorders? Because when your whole world that you're living in is so full of cognitive dissonance behaviours from those that you're taught as a child to respect and listen to and learn from, your intuition, we talk so much about your intuition, your intuition is not matching your environment and something inside you knows something not right. But there's been so many studies, brilliant studies done, and some really cruel studies done on how conformist most humans are. And I was looking at one earlier about the Ash Line test. And basically, this was someone where the scientist, um, surname of Ash, basically got a whole load of people in there and there were some actors, I mean, there's worse ones done with electric shocks and things like that, but they had three lines on a board and it was very obvious that they were different lengths and they'd get the actors to sort of all say, oh no, that one's the longest sound. And some of them be right. And then suddenly they'd swap to lie. And the people who weren't in on the lie on the experiment, over 33% of them and well, a huge percentage for a few times would actually just conform because they didn't want to stand out. And that's what we see. This is why cognitive dissonance can be used as such a tool against us as individuals and collectiveness, because humans have this general desire to conform as a, as a survival instinct. And therefore, when you've got people that are using some of these psychological tools deliberately, against you then we're in real trouble because it's really hard for people to really follow their gut follow their intuition or stand up for their beliefs they're much more controllable yeah and i can say just from i know Catherine and i from our unique experiences of having a public platform um and, and and finding ourselves in these roles it is hard to be the lone wolf that stands up and says something's not right because I mean, I've, I think I've developed a form of PTSD just from being on YouTube because of the amount of threats I've gotten just for questioning certain, mm -hmm. certain things, right? And so it is understandable why people would not want to question, but that still doesn't mean you shouldn't question, mm -hmm. right? Because the mind, the, the health of the mind literally is what can generate the health of everything in your life. And so when your mind is in a state of not being healthy, you're going to notice everything in your life is going to start to, 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 to mirror that to you. And I like how Dr. Brenner said here, you know, that having an inner conflict is a good thing because that's your, that's your trigger. That's saying something isn't right. Something yeah. isn't right. And again, it's Aristotle's quote that says this is a sign of an, an intelligent mind who can entertain an idea without accepting it. So let's say you're somebody watching and you've needed to believe these last however many years of the white hats are in charge. Let's say you, you really need to believe that. Well, can you, for maybe 15 minutes, just contemplate what if they aren't? Doesn't mean you have to accept it. It just means you're you're being you're critically looking at your own belief system. And if we critic just because you ignore something doesn't mean it's gonna go away. In fact, what you resist will persist. Right? Mm -hmm. So what what we're not what we're not what we're do if we're all living in cognitive dissidence, we're not actually finding the solution. You know, we were saying, Catherine, we've said this many times that we've noticed even within our own community that people love the salacious videos. Oh, absolutely. 
but they don't want to watch the videos about solutions. Yeah. To the problem. They and that is, that's such a good example of cognitive dissonance because you're saying you want the world to be a different place. You're saying you want the world to change as long as it's not you that has to do it. And this, again, none of this is a criticism. We're saying this because it happens to absolutely all of us. But when we realize how controllable it makes us to be in this situation, then we can see it's not. Because you might genuinely believe the White Hat's in control. I mean, it's not up for up to either of us. We can share what our beliefs are, but you don't have to match them at all. But if we can't have a civil, calm, intelligent conversation about it from either side then the one who's unable to have that calm conversation about it is without a shadow of a doubt suffering from some form of cognitive dissonance. Because if it's not something that you're bothered about, I've said it before, you know, if someone calls me a pink elephant, I'm not going to get incited about it because it's pretty obvious I'm not a pink elephant. However, if someone says something that touches a nerve and is a bit closer to home, then I've got to look at why, why that gives a reaction. And, and I think there's a lot of people have lost the art of contemplation, as you touched on there now. In, you know, people say if someone makes it, this is just an example. I know YouTube is so unimportant, the bigger scale of it, but it's a resource that we all use to help expand our consciousness at the moment. And it can have some brilliant information. There. So let's say someone makes a comment under this video. And let's say one of us responds to it with a different point of view. That's not our censoring or that's not as that. If you can't entertain a different point of view, then there's a level of cognitive dissonance in you. If you can't sort of say, well, that's interesting. Let's see what they want to say about it. Um, then they're, they're, the issue is with you if you can't have that conversation. And it's hard because obviously on YouTube, we're doing it in writing, in comments, which isn't the same as having a backwards and forwards conversation. But equally, as adults, we should all have that skill to be able to do it, to be able to do it in written form, in spoken form, because being unattached, as you said, to that idea and being able to say, well, what if? I wonder what if? What, what if I do contemplate this? And contemplate is just literally calmly thinking about something without being attached to the outcome, in my understanding. Yeah, it's finding that's the whole part. That's the whole crux of another crux of spirituality. Um, is being able to stand up for what is right and to do what you can to protect yourself and what is right, but also having equanimity with what is to come, being at peace with whatever is going to be. Even you've done what you can, and now you have to like give it to God or like let it just play itself out. And I, you're right, Catherine. It's you know we, we make fun of the other side of this timeline war we're in, whatever you want to call it, because they all need safe spaces, right? which I think is ridiculous. There were no safe spaces when I was a kid. My parents spout skit in my knee. They would say, Rubs, did you die? Rub some dirt on it. You know, yeah. the kids today need that coddling. Well, so do people in this community. They need coddling because of that cognitive distance. You're correct. If somebody does not agree with you and has a different opinion than you, it does not mean that they're trying to censor you or they're trying to dis have a discussion with you. That's what they're doing is we're trying to, to see different perspectives in different points of view. That's why in a perfect world in our government, we have what's called a balance of power. You know, that's why I remember my mother, who's a big time Republican, would tell us growing up, we don't want all the seats filled by Republicans. We want a few Democrats in there because we want to keep our, ba our, our, check our balance. We want to be balanced and we want to make sure we're seeing all perspectives, you know? And so the same has to be true within every aspect of life. Can you be, can you, crit can you critically, can you step back? First of all, your thoughts are not you. They're just an experience for this moment. So don't attach to them as something that is you. Can you then look at that thought and, critically analysis can, can you look at it and say okay maybe i'm a little flawed here maybe this this opinion is a little flawed let me look at other perspectives to see what other people have to say because they might there might be some more information that i need it's like i, I talked with tamara on tuesday morning we talked a lot about hollywood and one thing that's terrifying me like absolutely terrifying me about the quote unquote truth or community. I know we're, we're preaching to the choir right now. Like I know a lot of people who watch these chats with us are very much uh, are in line with what we're saying, but I'm seeing a lot of extreme black and white thinking, extreme dogma and extreme vigilante uh, behaviors. 
And that's scary. Terrifying. Really, really scary. It's terrifying. And so mm -hmm. we see people cast judgment on anybody who works in Hollywood must be bad. Yeah. That can be a form of cognitive dissonance. And if we sit back logically and entertain the idea that not everybody in Hollywood is bad, it starts to make more sense, right? If you look at logically what the, the bad guys do, let's talk about the religious, we'll call them the religious practices of the bad guy. We don't need to go into detail of what that is, but they're so horrific what they do that logically you have to understand they're not going to tell everyone, mm -hmm. right? It's like our friend, Jamie Soleil, who is an, an athlete. And we have people out there saying all athletes must be doing this, these bad things. Oh, no. it's so annoying. Yeah, I know a lot of top professional athletes, quite a lot. And it's just so frustrating when you tar everyone with the same brush. And it's easy to do and it's tempting to do because it's sort of everyone's busy, they're tired, they're frustrated, but it's never going to get you where you want enough. If you're... The thing is about cognitive dissonance, when you accept that we all have it in some areas, when you then are aware to look for where it's affecting you, it can relieve so much stress and anxiety in your life because you're like, do you know what? I don't necessarily need to be saying this, but there's a reason why I'm feeling out of balance here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to open myself up to more information because something is telling me if I'm being really honest with myself, you know, if you've got any of those low vibe emotions, if you're, if it's making you angry, if it's making you frustrated, if it's making you judgmental, if it's making you jealous, um, then that's a sort of warning sign, a little red sign to say, okay, there's some more information I need here. Something's out of alignment. My intuition and what I'm saying or behaving like is out of alignment. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And that's where we get when we have people who are gr big groups of people. If you look throughout history, when the biggest disasters have ever happened in our in our world, mainly like this, the Salem witch trials or the witch hunt all over the world. Think about that. It was a massive form of cognitive dissonance that was mm -hmm. happening, happening among the collective. And what's scary with that kind of mental uh, disorder is that the table can get turned on you at any time. You yeah. Know? I mean, Catherine and I have dealt with it ridiculous like totally absolutely ridiculous stuff has been said about us that's not true but because there's cognitive dissonance yeah. people are, are going on this vigilante es escapade to promote lies basically right and so um again i was telling Catherine off camera i'll just go ahead and say this um i am going to be doing an affiliate program with amazon because i i suggest a lot of books on my channel mm. and i always put the links down for the books and i thought you know what i'm just going to create an affiliate link so i can put everything in, in one little area so people can go and see past books books our friend kelly teal's books anybody yeah. who's been on the channel that's written i can just put it all there in this one little section easy access for people and Kathy and I were talking before. And I was like, I am kind of nervous because I know people are going to get on and smear me because I'm doing it with Amazon. But the reality of the situation is it's more complex than that. We know that there are bad people in these corporations. But are you telling me that every person who sells on Amazon is a bad person? No. no. So many people use, use platforms like Amazon, like our friend Kelly, who wrote an incredible book that can help people about their, their her experience in Nexium. She uses Amazon to get that get book, book guys. I've yeah. got, I was up with her last, uh, like yesterday. It'll be coming out next week. But it's so important because it's everything. You could say that about using Zoom. You can say yeah. that about YouTube. You know, why do you think we put so many videos on Rum Rumble? Because we can't say it on here. But right. anyone who's watching this is watching it on YouTube. So it's this inherent not labeling. It's not always the tool that's bad it's never the tool that's bad actually it's the intent and who's using it so of course there's some good people that work with amazon of course there's a huge amount of problems with amazon but then so is there with where most people are working right. let's look at where most people any of you that are listening and can you hand on heart say you know that everyone within your organization if anyone's working for a big corporation there's going to be issues with it yeah, absolutely. Anybody. And that's the thing I, I was telling you, Catherine, people send me nasty emails about, yeah, about being, you know, doing, you know, having Instagram or you know, crazy stuff. And I want to be like, well, well, where do you work? 
And also, how do they know you've got Instagram? They can't know you've got Instagram if they've not found you on Instagram. Exactly. Exactly. So they've obviously been on Instagram to find you. I mean, you have to laugh at these ironies. If you're looking to pick a fault with something like that, then quite frankly, you're bloody sad and you should go and do some charity work. Because if that's the level of consciousness that you're, I mean, Wayne Doe, I've said it so many times before, one of my favourite quotes from him is, people will spend all day looking for things to be offended about. Right. And if you're recognising you're in that vibration, don't beat yourself up about it, but recognise it and do something about it by going and doing something good for someone else and take the uh, the attention off why you're so bloody offended about everything and go and do something to help someone else absolutely and even like with the whole you know amazon i think we use amazon a lot too because we have people watching this video right now from all over the world which is so cool yeah. and amazing so for me as the and for Catherine, for our our platforms we're servicing we're, we're communicating in one video to people from all over the world. Yeah. So if I were to put a, a link to a book from a store in Atlanta that was a mom pop shop, and I would put that link there, they wouldn't be able to, first of all, I don't know any bookstores in Atlanta that are left that are mom pop shops because they all got shut down, right? So mm. if I want to share Kelly's book, for example, with the greater world, I'm going to put the Amazon link. Because first of all, Kelly, who is my friend and Catherine's friend, gets a little kickback. She wrote mm -hmm. the book. It's her book. She deserves some kickback, right? Second of all, somebody in Germany is going to be able to also order from Amazon. And as I was telling uh, Catherine, if, if, the, if someone from Germany is watching right now and wants to order a book I promote and would rather read it in German, guess what? Amazon's going to be able to provide that for them to, in their native language. And so even though there might be a couple of people at the top of Amazon that might not be that great, guarantee you I would bet my life on it 99 percent of the people who work for amazon are just like you and me they're good people they're trying to make a living they're trying to do some good kelly's book uh dr yanya's book i'm going to put up all these books were written for people to help themselves to mm. better themselves and so it's that quote my teacher used to say everywhere looking god seeing so if you're if you can't if you label things as such black and white then that is a mental disorder and you need to go and see a professional because that is concerning. And I will say, same thing with therapy. I get so much backlash from people because I promote therapy. So you're telling me that every single human being on this planet who went to medical school to become a therapist or a psychotherapist or a psychiatrist, you're telling me that every single one of them are all Luciferians? Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing because it's like, imagine if we all, uh, there's this saying, put on your rose-tinted glass, glasses, and I know both sides wouldn't be too much, but imagine, and I've been trying this for the last sort of three or four months, I'm, I don't stick to it all the time, I'm not pretending I stick to it all the time, however, it's made a big personal difference to me, where every single person in every situation, I look for what's good in it, what's good in it first. Because everyone has got different inputs. You know, I can't possibly, however empathetic I am, I can't step into someone else's shoes because there'll be so much about their lives and their experiences that I won't ever know about, however good friends we are. And also, even if I'd experienced the same experiences as them, we'd react differently to them because we've got different physiology, we've got different souls, you know. So the the... The beauty is, is if we if we go through life with sort of looking for what's good without making ourselves vulnerable, that doesn't mean you don't have strong boundaries. That doesn't mean you invite dangerous people or narcissists or evil into your life. But you can go through if you look at that. If we, if anyone, and I think you know, again, we are preaching to the converted, but most of us believe in some sort of law of vibration and attraction. And if you're vibrating at that level where you're looking for what's right in a situation, you're going to attract a lot more of that into your life. Yeah. You are. There's no way you can't. So if we want to create this new world, imagine if we did it by sort of saying, let's have an experiment. Let's all say if we could just be either say something really nice, behave really nice or remove ourselves from this com the situation if it's something that's not going to serve you without resorting to 
bringing yourself back down to whoever's triggered you. Oh, absolutely. As you're saying that, I'm thinking that's brilliant. You look at things like Amazon affiliates that a lot of people do. Isn't it? That was the reason why I decided why I'm signing up to do it. I'm in the process of creating the page right now so that my viewers, you guys watching right now, our friends watching right now. Wow, cool. All of the books that she's ever promoted on this channel are all together in one section so I can see everything all organized so I know where it is. Same with Catherine. If Catherine were to do something like that, wow, cool. That's the positive side of that. And now I can really see that if I buy Kelly's book, she's going to get kicked back for that because Kelly's a yes. good person is trying to help. Can you look at it that way versus saying, oh, you know, Amazon's bad? Because listen, guys, I've said this before. I'll say it again. Darkness can't create anything. It can't. It can only steal from the light and invert it. So can we look at, as, as Catherine's saying, can you look at the positive side? The, yes, Zoom is an application that we know it's used a lot for nefarious stuff. However, it's just a, it's just a tool. So it's also used for a lot of really good stuff too. And if really we good stuff, yeah, and people have been able to communicate with loved ones all over the world because of this. Mm -hmm. um, and it's exciting, you know. We we talk about be the change and things like this, and perhaps this is why things do take so long because we've got to learn to listen to things and look at things in a different way. And we want to know how you've learned to look at things in a different way as well. We want to know what works for you. You know, if if everyone shared a comment below about a really helpful tip of what works for them, then imagine how much benefit we could all get from that. It would just be Oh, beautiful. absolutely. I would love that, guys. Leave that down in the, in the description box below. Like, where do you, what, what have you done to try to stop the, um, the train of thought that leads you into cognitive dissonance? Try to catch yourself before you fall off that edge. And also, I want to hear from people just so people feel more comfortable, because I think it takes a big person to admit, like, I've, I've fallen for this before. I'm Catherine. And I, I think every week we're like, we fell for something once. We too. That. <laughs> yeah, we, fell for it. we fall for it all the time. All the time. But I think it, for, our, for our audience watching right now, and of course, put whatever you're comfortable putting, but maybe share a story of where you were in cognitive dissonance and what happened to make you realize that you were in that cognitive dissonance and how... And again, when once you figure it out that that's what it is, there's such liberation. Yeah. Like the bondage melts off of you and you can start to kind of relax a little bit. And, and something that people have said many times in my life, and I think it's so true, you're allowed in some situations in life, you're allowed to not have an opinion. Like, It's so freeing. It's yeah. so lovely. Just that saying, I really don't know. I and don't then know. it might be something you're interested in finding out more about, or it might not. Equally right. fine. It's okay to not have an that was I've said this before, I know a while ago, I'll say it again. That was one of the most liberating things I saw with my teacher David Grieg in Philadelphia. You know, he's one of the most sought after experienced teachers in the world. And he um, is brilliant at philosophy and he would answer these questions about philosophy. He would, you know, just an incredible teacher. And somebody asked him a question in a conference once and he looked at the person and he said, I don't know. Mm. And to hear him say that was like, wow. Oh, okay. Well, you're allowed not to have an opinion. Like you don't have to rush to have an opinion. Um, there are many stories that I've covered where at the end I say, I don't know, I don't really have an opinion because I see both sides. And so so maybe, you know, when it comes to political leaders or actors, if you've been trained throughout this, trained, I say trained throughout this great awakening to label things, people as Satanists or label them as bad, but maybe you feel like they might not be bad. Can you just be in that place of, I don't know. I don't know. And that's okay. I don't know yet. I, I don't have an opinion over this person or over, you know, like, it's very freeing. So, um, so yes. So anyway, but anything you want to add to that, Catherine? I think uh, just have a little bit of fun with this. Have a little bit of fun. If you've got good friends that you can have some of these conversations with and just start questioning each other in, in a kind and open way, just because it can be really great because a lot of these ones, these areas where we've got cognitive dissonance about, they're so deep seated we don't know we really don't know and in an age where everyone's just been so taught to have an opinion about everything and it's either this you're either on this side or you're on that side and there's nothing in between life's never like that so you know allowing yourself that flexibility having a bit of fun imagine if we all opened up the art again of being able to have 
a really honest, open conversations with people without getting offended, without being abusive. You know, that's one thing I just won't tolerate on my chat. There's a big difference between censoring and tolerating abuse. It's yeah. called boundaries. And if I, so, you know, let's see if we can, um, you know, it's brilliant. This, that's why these sayings, let's agree to disagree. But you should be able to agree to disagree with someone. And unless it's on something that you really a horrified bat still be able to go and have a beer with them absolutely actually i'm gonna put so i can't i can't say too much about this yet but on friday i went and had a two-hour meeting with somebody who is completely different from me on the completely different political aisle than i am and i was nervous about it but i did it and i learned so much from this person and i realized in that two-hour conversation that we had more in common then we had that were different. And you know what? This person respected my beliefs too. Hmm. He respected me. And I can't, that's all I can say about it now. It's a pretty big, pretty big, big deal, but I'll, I'll probably talk about it more later on, but I'm going to challenge people. People, if you're sitting here, like if this conversation has struck some ideas in your head and if you want homework, you don't have to do this. I'm going to put out a challenge for you to find somebody in your life that, you know, has a very different opinion about you uh, are about something like politics or religion, and you know you guys are very different. I'm going to challenge you. Don't put yourself in a harmful situation. Like if this is an abusive yeah. person, then don't. I'm talking about your your normal everyday. Let's say you're a staunch I'm psychopathic. Right. Don't go to, to a narcissistic abusive situation. I'm talking about. Let's say that. You, let's say you support Mr. T, and one of your friends supports Mr. B, but you're good friends. I'm going to challenge you to call that friend up invite them to lunch or get coffee or whatever and just say or just talk on the phone and just say i would like to hear why you support x y and z what are your reasonings behind this i want to understand don't listen to respond listen to understand and just see what you learn from hearing, hearing that love it thank you so much for anyone's assistance i cannot wait to see all your ideas um, I can't wait to see, um, you know, I love it. Some people are really good at coming up with phrases, really good open questioning, um, anything that resonates with you that you can share that you think is going to be helpful to everyone, us included, please do share because we'd love to see. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to see it too because this is something that we're both working on as well. So <laughs> Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Sure. All right, you guys. And also, um, oh, but, but what's my, my mother used to say, oh, but by the grace of God, go I. So when you feel the need to judge someone because they have an affiliate link with Amazon or because they shop at a big, um, you know, chain store for whatever reason, maybe just, oh, but by the grace of God, go I. Where in my life are, am I still hooked up to the matrix? Because that's what, it's a matrix world. There's yeah. Catherine and I, just because we're on YouTube does not mean that we live on some distant planet where, where we can avoid this group of people. No, we have to work with it because that's where we are right now on planet Earth. So judge not, least ye be judged. And oh, but by the grace of God, go I. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful Thursday. Have a very safe um, weekend. Very hot here in the United States right now. So stay cool. And, um, and yeah, we'll talk to you soon. See you next week. Bye. Bye.